There is one God the Father He who created all things Through His Son, the one Lord Jesus Christ The sacrifice for death's pain And there is one hope of salvation at the end and there is one faith the one that purifies from sin and there is one baptism the one Jesus died to give by one spirit into one body that lives through the power of the love that flows through the veins of the Father and the Son and through the children every day Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus tonight. This is Larry Hale. My son Elisha is with me. And once again, this is the By One Spirit broadcast. And once again, we just focused on Jesus and on whatever He will bring to us and bring through us by the means of His Spirit, which He sent back in His name. And that's where it's all at. So I want you to join us if you will. If you have time for about the next 25 minutes to stay tuned and we're going to get into some good things and if the Lord is what you're after if salvation is what you seek if your hope is set on things above or if you just want to get it that way then stay tuned because the Lord is going to bring things here tonight that you can hear and see and feel they're going to help you go that direction as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. That's what we're on here for, is being led, and that's what we're on Amen. here for, to promote is you being led by the Spirit yourself. So God bless you this evening, and we'll see if Elisha has a song or if he has something else on his mind, and we'll go from there. Last week, my dad was talking about all the different things people justify themselves in, whether it's ceremonies, or traditions of men and how none of those things is what justifies you. Not to mention that the ceremonies of the law that people partake in are fulfilled in the spirit baptism and that many of the dress codes and other types of things people have are just traditions of men to begin with. But something I was thinking about is that people justify themselves based off of the things they do that are wrong that aren't that bad. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People justify themselves by saying, I don't do this, so I'm all right. right. <laughs> That's not the way I read it in the Bible. The way I read it was that we're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, that the being justified by faith in Jesus Christ, it, it has no room for, well, you know, what I did wasn't that bad. Right. It has no room for, well, you know, I'll do this, this doing this thing, this whether it's a... Uh, ceremonial ordinance or something you can do with your body this justifies me that's not being justified by faith in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. being justified by faith in Jesus Christ is believing upon him to the point to where he literally purifies your conscience from dead works Amen. that's being justified you, you can't you can't stand justified when you're guilty of something right. but when when that guilt is cleared then you're justified, and the only way any guilt, whether it's the smallest, uh, you know, infraction of your own conscience, or if it's the largest crime, like, uh, you know, the people that are locked away for the rest of their lives in prison, all of that was paid for at the cross, all of it. Yeah. But it doesn't do you any good until you honor what he did when he resurrected and brought that, brought that, uh, you know, worthy sacrifice and presented it to the Father in heaven. Until you believe upon. His, his enactment of that sacrifice doesn't do you any good at all. It's, it's like having a credit card you don't use to pay off your debts. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're justified by faith in Jesus to, to, the, to the empowering of the soul and the clearing of the conscience. Amen. If you've been called, your name's been written. In a book inscribed with heaven the ink But don't be deceived Your entry can be stricken If your heart dies in deceit For leaning on your own understanding Trusting in your mortal heart Fallacy 
about as real as it gets really I mean at the Last Supper we know that it's Judas that betrayed Jesus and uh, the other 11 apostles found that out eventually but at the Last Supper when Jesus said this night one of you shall betray me nobody looked at Judas everybody looked at themselves and said Lord is it I it wasn't like Judas was some you know raging maniac running around, cursing people out and things like that. Jesus was casting out devils and healing the sick and raising the dead and preaching the absolute truth of God. And he, But he had a problem with, with taking money out of the bag, and I'm certain that he justified it. Yep. And Jesus said the workman was worthy of his hire, and he probably used that and everything else. And But what it all comes down to is he was stealing and he That's was extorting. Right. And, but nobody knew that. Of course, Jesus knew it. But the division there between Judas and John is just exactly like the song says. Judas just didn't maintain an honest enough heart to acknowledge that what he was doing 
couldn't be justified, but it, that it was wrong, and that's why nobody knew about it, is because he was doing it secretly. And people have a habit of, if, if somebody wants to continue something that's wrong, they'll do it secretly a lot of times, uh, especially if there's somebody that's, that's standing for the name of the Lord and everything. But I like the parable of the sower and the seed. And one thing a lot of people don't realize about that parable, a number of things actually, is that it's four categories, it's four conditions that a believer in Christ can be in is, is what the parable is about. And the only, the only condition that merits salvation and eternal life at the end of your journey is being that fourth class of soil. And I like the way Luke described it. He said, but those who keep the word in a good and honest heart Amen. till the end Ooh, come on, come on. bear forth fruit. And, and in another place it says some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But that good and honest heart is what must be maintained in order to really, first of all, want to know what is right and what is wrong when it when when things get kind of tight and you're faced with difficult situations and things and that wants to know what's right and wrong and then is honest enough to acknowledge uh, what is right or what is wrong particularly what is wrong and then is honest and willing enough to get down before God and open it up and seek him in repentance and seek him to make the heart and the spirit right in that place where it was wrong where it was defiled uh, Jesus said everything that defiles a man is what comes out of the heart and our hearts are purified by the Holy Ghost by the love of God by his power when we're baptized with the Holy Ghost by Jesus and we're washed and sanctified and justified by the spirit there as it says in 1st Corinthians 6 and 11 and the task after that until the end is to keep it that way and you know we don't spend all of our thoughts and our prayers on on our own heart and spirit but we do have to invest a good bit into that because unless that stays in a right balanced state of righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost and stays in that peace that passes understanding and the love that passes knowledge and the joy that's unspeakable and full of glory unless that stays there uh, the rest of what we're doing is not going to count for much. That, that's why uh, the Apostle Paul wrote the things in 1 Corinthians 13 and said that though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not the love of God, Amen. It, it profits me nothing. And though I have faith to move mountains and uh, have understanding of all mysteries and knowledge, yet if I don't have the love of God in it, it profits me nothing. And went on to say, even if I give my body to be burned, give all my goods, sell everything to feed the poor, and have not the love of God dwelling in my in the core of my being, then it's not going to do me any good. So we do have to invest a lot into prayer and keeping our heart with all diligence, as Proverbs 4 and 23 says. And just keeping by prayer and faith toward Jesus, because it's, it's His will, uh, even our sanctification, the Scripture says, and sanctification means a purified spirit, a purified heart and soul. So it's God's will. And so whenever we're praying about that and we're seeking diligently that to make it right or to preserve it right, to strengthen it in right, then those prayers are going to be answered if they're in faith. And, and those who love righteousness and those who love pureness of heart, which is holiness, uh, are going to be praying about those things and they're going to have faith in, in the Lord making everything right and and they're going to be righted and kept right and they don't have excuses they don't the elect of God do not use excuses excuses is not a part of the lives of the elect of God because they're too busy keeping things right making things right and seeking God for making the hearts and spirits of other people right, you know, as well as for many other things that we pray about and make intercession to the Lord for, for ourselves and for others, and for situations going on and so forth. But it, it, it really is, like the song says, 
is, is having a heart that's honest enough to acknowledge where you're really at in your spirit because that's where it's all at. That's where the tale is told is in here. Uh, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. And, and note that it says in our hearts, and our hearts are purified by faith. Notice it says our hearts, <clears throat> as Romans 5 and 5, Acts 15, 7 and 8, and 1 Peter 1 and 22, purified, <clears throat> our spirits purified by the Spirit. And the only way that happens in the beginning is for somebody to get real and get honest about, hey, uh, man, I'm full of sin. Uh, I've, I'm, God, have mercy on him. Have mercy on me, a sinner, Lord. Make me right and seek God until he baptizes your soul, until Jesus baptizes your spirit with the Holy Ghost and joins you to him literally and to his Father by the Spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. 1 Corinthians 6 and 17, Father, make them one even as we are one. Thou in me and I in them, that they may be made perfect in one. And it's by being baptized into Christ by His power and Spirit. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, and, and that's how we're joined to the Lord and made one with the Father and with the Son, is by the Spirit. And that's where it starts, and that's the way we get there, is by being honest enough to acknowledge that, hey, I'm not right. You know, the Apostle Paul said he was perfect in the law, but the law made nothing perfect as pertaining to the heart and the conscience either. And he described how that when he was under the law, before he was in Christ, mind you, that he would go to do good and evil would be present. And he said, uh, to do good, I found the will to do so, but how to perform it, I couldn't, I couldn't get a hold of that. And then he went on down to say, thank God uh, that my Lord Jesus Christ delivered me from the body of this death, meaning from sin. And, but after that, it's keeping the heart pure and keeping it right to where it's God's love guiding us and, and um, he gives us that feeling for people's needs and things like that and a thankful spirit and just a, a rest and a refreshing in the Holy Ghost in our souls and in our spirits that we can walk in and live in and be under that light yoke and carry that light burden which is his peace and his rest instead of uh, being dishonest about where we're at and then once you let one sin remain in your heart, one thing that disrupts that love and that peace from flowing sweetly and smoothly and purely, once you let one thing disrupt that and you don't deal with that, honestly and truly you don't get it right, then other things are going to come. Yep. It's just going to be added, added on to. By the same token, you can make your heart right and pure by the power of God's Spirit, by faith in Jesus. And like I said, it's His will is our sanctification and we can continue to diligently uh, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness with top priority the song talked about priorities and Jesus said seek ye first meaning with top priority the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you and worked out well the kingdom of God he also said doesn't come with observation but behold the kingdom of God is within you because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink it's not external things it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Amen. Holy Ghost according to Romans 14 and 17 and he that serveth Christ in these things is acceptable unto God and approved of men meaning approved of men of God and approved of all men because they cannot condemn you unless they do it falsely and so seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness is what I've been speaking on here all together and, and everything else will revolve around that and, and be worked out and, and that's that's the calling it really is that's the calling and, and again I quote it often I quote a lot of the same scriptures often because it's so integral but blessed are the pure in heart for Amen. they shall see God and uh, the apostle Paul said the same thing in different words without holiness no man shall see the Lord and because holiness and pureness of heart are the same thing, it says in Proverbs, he that loveth pure, he that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. Amen. And that king is Jesus, and he's a friend of those who allow him to purify their hearts and souls from all sin and infuse his love and his peace in there and his holiness and truth, and those who will be led by that same Holy Spirit into more of his holiness. But as I was saying, as one sin can lead to many more if you don't keep it checked. If you do keep your heart checked and you do purify your heart and you keep it that way, 
then God will add righteousness, more of his righteousness and more of his love and more of his peace onto us. And it takes some dying out to the old nature, the old man. And, and that's done by denying sin and ungodliness and living soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, as Titus 2, 11 and 12 tells us. And so we're going to add on in one direction or the other. We're going to we're going to have a snowball effect. People talk about riding the fence and and things like there there. I got news for you. There is no fence. <laughs> Anybody that's riding the fence is on the wrong side of the fence. And riding the fence itself is a term of justifying oneself. Like you were saying, is that I'm not doing anything that mm-hmm. bad. Well, if you're Jesus said, those who are not with me are against me. And unless you're being presently led by the Spirit, you're not with Him because the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, meaning from sin, inside, because that's where sin's at. Jesus said that the things that defile the man are the, are the things that come out of the heart, and that's why the heart has to be purified. So there is no fence, my friend. Uh, lukewarm, you, you know, yeah, I'd rather it be hot or cold, and but since you're lukewarm, I'll speak out of my mouth. Lukewarm is on the wrong side of the fence with cold. Hot's the only place to be with God. He is following hard after his spirit and, and keeping yourself pure and just flat out refusing to allow anything but his holiness and peace to dwell in the middle of your being. Amen. And if you do that, then for the grace Oof. of your lips, the king will be your friend. But that's all i got for the moment. There's time for another song if you want to finish this off or something.
Revelation 21 and 8. That's a real sobering song, and that's as big a reality. There is documented evidence by people who have had real uh, afterlife experiences, have visited heaven, have visited hell, uh, have been instructed and spoken to by angels and even by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. There's repeated evidence documented in these experiences that approximately 98 out of 100 people in this world who die go to hell. So there's a good reason why the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 2 and 12 to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and why the psalm of David in the second Psalm 11 verse says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Uh, this is a very serious way. And the things that I've preached on here uh, about being pure in heart and soul, really pure by the power of God's spirit and staying that way is the only way to escape that fate and be one of those two out of the hundred. So, God bless you, my friend. Thank you for being with us this evening. Uh, it's been a blessing. We look forward to seeing you again next time.